Police Department. Now, let me tell you just a little bit about Amelia Boyd Robinson. Mrs. Robinson is the black woman who was beaten down on the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma, Alabama in uh, 1965. Mm -hmm. uh, she joined about 400 people up to cross the bridge from Montgomery to Selma to Montgomery. Jim Clark, the sheriff, and Al Lingo, the state trooper supervisor, told them that it wouldn't be no march by no negress from Selma to Montgomery. Is this the Congressman John Lewis March? Was yes, yes, mm -hmm. ma'am. Okay. That beautiful Congressman John Lewis. Mm -hmm. And John Lewis and company said, okay, well, let us pray. You know, so the first time across, uh, Al Lingo and Sheriff Jim Clark stood back and respected their right to pray. But they told them when they got through praying to the Lord, now you all go right on back home and back to your churches and, and be good people. So they did that. But then these black people decided, uh, we want to march from Selma to Montgomery. And see, they wanted to do it before because Jim Bevels, uh, Reverend Jim Bevels, when Jimmy Lee Jackson was shot and killed in Marion, he wanted to take Jim, uh, Jimmy Lee Jackson's body down to the uh, state house in Montgomery and dump it on the steps for George Wallace, the governor, you know, mm -hmm. to get some attention. But you know how we are. We won't let that happen with our dead, you know. So uh, uh, they decided, well, we're going to walk. So now the second time across, they walked up to that blue line. Mm -hmm. And Jim Clark and Al Lingo had pulled all the state troopers out and all the sheriff deputies out and all the able-bodied white men who had guns and stuff out and gave them big clubs and horses and stuff. And this time, when they attempted to kneel and pray, they got overrun by horses and people and beaten with clubs and etc. Well, Mrs. Robinson was beaten down on that bridge and left for dead. And some people told Sheriff Jim Clark, hey, there's somebody over there and we think that they're dead. Jim Clark said, if somebody over there is dead, let the buzzards go eat them. And the black people said, if you don't go and get that person, we're going to burn Selma down. And naturally, Jim Clark went and got that person. Well, that's Mrs. Robinson. And Mrs. Robinson, that beating inspired her to stand and fight until this day. And that's why she ended up here at your town hall meeting to meet and greet with Officer Callaway and these other police officers, including a uh, white police officer, Amanda Vaughn, to encourage them to go forward and never look back. Now, Mr. Frazier, let me just paint a, a, a visual for mm -hmm. our, uh, you know, for our listening audience uh, with respect to the, uh, it's more than a pamphlet, the booklet of your, that uh, encaptures your investigation. Of course, the cover of it has uh, Amelia Borden Robinson in front of Macon City uh, Hall along with uh, Callaway. But on the inside, I think that's the real telling piece. I mean, it's a real uh, telling piece uh, as you uh, uh, broach on the subject of the Macon Police Department. You have a photograph of uh, Mayor Robert Rickard. What page are you on? I'm on this page right here. Okay, yeah. Because <laughs> uh, it's the comparisons that's interesting. You have a picture of Mayor uh, Robert Rickard, um, and then you have a picture of City Hall, and then you have a picture of Chief Thomas Burns. Then, below that, you have a, pair, um, a, a photograph of uh, Mayor Joseph uh, Smitherman, who was the mayor, I guess, at that time of Borton uh, in Selma, Alabama. You have a photograph of uh, Selma to cover the bridge. And then you have a photograph of Sheriff Jim Clark uh, in Alabama, who is the uh, sheriff that you mentioned on, on the bridge. Uh, the choices, <laughs> the well, choices of these photographs uh, is very telling to me. It, it's, it's a comparative analysis of two cities and two periods of time whereby you had a mayor who didn't give a damn about the people of Selma and it appears as though you have a mayor who don't care much about the black people and I'm talking about the least of these. I'm not talking about the black people that he can go to church and sit up and smile with and they can shake hands and rub shoulders and feel good and those people can go home and get in their Lincolns and go outside the church and go home, get in their Lexus outside and go home. How I'm not talking about that? those people. Huh? How did He's you been know here a year. did that? He's been here a year. Hey, <laughs> I, know a whole, I know a whole lot about what's happening. I'm actually being sarcastic. <laughs> 
But but see, it's more to it than that. It's what you do. If, if you got old senior citizens who come out in front of their sitting place and they sit there to talk and to rejoice and to wait on their bus rides and etc. And then the mayor make an arbitrary decision to take away their benches because some hoolums are who are hanging around in the area. Well, then that's reflective of what Smitherman thought about black folk back in 1965. Because that's a police problem. All you got to do is put a police officer on a motorcycle and sit him down in front of that place and assign him to keep the riffraff separated from the quality senior citizens. Yeah. You know, and if you don't have enough sense to know that as a mayor, you got a problem, mm -hmm. you see. And then if you let your police chief be negligent enough not to put the police officer on the motorcycle down there to keep them separated and to give uh, quality service delivery to those senior citizens who's paid their dues. These people have paid their dues to society and they deserve the best protection that you can get. And then when we move into law enforcement, you got Sheriff Jim Clark sitting up there messing over black people in Selma back in 1965. And then you got the police chief messing over black people right here in this city. Now, Sheriff Jim Clark was just picking on regular folk. Here, Chief Thomas Burns is picking on the best vetted black citizens in the world. Right here in this city. Police officers, when they go through background, they're they are checked all the way back to their grandmamas mm -hmm. and their granddaddies and their mamas and their daddies and whether your brother been to jail and all of that. So Callaway, Red, Kellum, and Morris and those other black police officers, Burns knew everything about them. He knew their strengths. He knew their weaknesses. And if they was weak in an area, all he had to do was go and build them up in that weak area.